Hello, ladies, and welcome to The Beauty Shaman. So today I'm starting a four-part series with the fabulous Tamara Keith, life and business coach. So hello, Tamara. Hello, Suzanne. So I'm excited to do this again. We love talking, Tamara, and I. We have very similar views, and so this is a very exciting four-part series that we are going to um, engage in, and we are it, the, the basis of it is fearless conversation and our first fearless conversation is about what does it mean to be fearless in part three of your life and that's where we are right Tamara we're in part three absolutely uh, well I don't know how many parts will there be but this is definitely the next part of my life and I turned 50 uh, over a year ago yes. so absolutely Yes, I think part three is the kids are kind of almost gone, right? And many of us, like me, are divorced. You're so fortunate you're not. Um, but, you know, we're thinking about our career. We're like, how can we take yeah. this part of our life and make it great, you know? And I think a lot of times the kids leave home and we're just like a dish rag. We don't know what to do. And so that's why I think this is such a valuable conversation is what does it mean now to be fearless and to lead our lives in a fearless way after 50? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So how can we? I mean, what, what is kind of the narrative? What are we trying to, to overcome here? You know, so the things that we think of, I think, when we think of that narrative is we're getting older. You know, you hear people talk about, oh, my gosh, I'm getting older. I've got wrinkles now. I've got gray hair now. You can see mine right there. Um, and um, we begin to try to live up to others' expectations even more, right? And for us, that's kind of where the fear sets in, is if we can't live up to others' expectations. So I think part of the narrative that we're talking about is, um, well, there's the cultural narrative, right? Like we're becoming older. Um, and, and maybe we hear even that word, senior you know <laughs> um and i don't know about you but when i hit 50 i got my aarp card that came in the mail and um and the word senior shows up and sometimes that means we're less valuable and i think we have to kind of rise above that narrative and begin to realize the value that we do bring and our kind of our what is the word i'm looking for our Mojo. <laughs> like our ability, it's our ability to share that, but it's also almost like our duty, our responsibility. That's the word I was looking for. To raise each other up, to recognize even as women, what is it that we can do to remind each other to be fearless? Sometimes it's easier to be fearless with a buddy, right? Yeah. Yes. And I think you're right. I think at this time of life, it's kind of like, okay, we're, we're, we're scaling down. We're you know, we're settled, we're, you know, and I think I know a lot of women like me and you that are like, oh, hell no, like, I got things I need to do, you know, I've got, or maybe we're just kind of lost. I think there's a lot of lostness. I have a lot of friends that are sort of wandering around bumping into walls because they're, they're not, not really their purpose, but I, I kind of around that, that word purpose um, is, has gone off to college, you know, and so they're, what now, you know, I've been a caretaker and suddenly, um, I'm supposed to be fearless and go out and change the world or something. I don't know. Like I'm so home focused. And I think that's our gift, right? Is being great wives and mothers. And it's such a great feminine gift. But then, you know, there's other dreams available to us. And I think that women kind of get a little bit, we get lost, I think. I love the word that you used, Suzanne, when you said what our focus is. Right? Yeah. So it, it might feel like our purpose but our purpose often lives right beside kind of what we're excited about, right? So it's not that we can actually identify directly our purpose sometimes, but I think our focus and what brought you joy in that particular focus kind of gives us an idea of what this next phase chapter in our life might bring. Um, I loved that he said, uh, we've decided that we're not buying into that narrative. I mean, I have so many friends right now who have just or are going to turn 50 and they get so um, upset by that. I don't want to talk about it. You know, I'm not telling you my age. I don't know. I felt super empowered 
when I turned 50. And for me, honestly, age is just a number. So I don't know what it was about that number other than it was everybody else telling me I should be sad about it or, or something. And I felt so differently. So I think number one, it's finding out what lights you up and going for it. Even if it's just making that phone call to somebody you haven't talked to in a while. I mean, we talk ourselves out of that, right? Oh, I haven't talked to them in a long time. What if I call and they just think I want something? Just go for it. What brings you that joy, that energy? And start there. You don't have to figure out what job you want. You don't figure out, have to figure out how to change the world. Just how to remember what it is that you love. And from there comes kind of that fearless spirit that we're talking about. Right. Yeah, and I think that that's, a, you know, when you no longer have the, all the caretaking, I mean, we still have caretaking to do, but, um, but I think that, that center of what brings me joy, what excites me, what, where, where do I want to go with this? And I think it's, it's almost overwhelming. I think, to go, oh my God, I'm actually going to do this thing that I've always wanted to do. Um, I mean, I was talking to my best friend yesterday and she was saying, you know, she's really, she actually has a really creative side, but she doesn't delve into it because she's busy. She's got this very corporate job and she was raising her kids and she was like, you know, trying to stay focused and all this. And suddenly it's like, okay, wait a minute, maybe I can take like a weekend, you know, and go someplace and create or do something creative. And it's such a scary thought. It's like, but wait, you know, <laughs> wait, I'm supposed to be like doing, you know, being this kind of worker, worker bee, you know, and that's a, a stepping out of that can be so scary. Well, and, you know, part of what I get to do is work with the people who are going through a lot of transition, whether that's, you know, to a new job or to a new phase of life or to a new, um, a new chapter of their life, you know, and I think one of the things that women, especially uh, 50 and older, is that we've been busy, 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 right? So in that busyness that you're talking about, we don't allow ourselves the time and the space to um, think about what it is that we want. So I love what you, your friend was saying and you were saying, it's like, how can I make that space and not feel guilty about it? I mean, you know, like uh, my kids are older, they're, um, you know, taking care of themselves more. I mean, it's a different kind of vigilance, right? We need right. to be there to support them and guide them, but it's a different kind. And I know when the house is empty and I just want to sit down and have a cup of tea and read my book or do my journaling or even just go for a walk, it took me forever to let go of the guilt of doing that because there's always things that should be done, right? Right, and I also think you had brought up something earlier about having a group of women around you who are also doing the same thing, having a support system. Um, because I do feel like um, sometimes they can pull, you know, maybe the, the significant other or families, if we live around our families, can pull us into, no, wait, you've done this, and this is who you've been. You, now what do you want to do? Like, it's almost, not that people don't want to be supportive, but I think sometimes stepping out of, into like a fearless you know, becoming fearless, can, there can be resistance around us almost. You kind of have to find those people who are also like taking those leaps. Absolutely. You know, you hear, you hear the word a lot, like find your tribe, right? Yeah. And, or or your, your seat, your board of, um, your board of your life. And I, I love that language. And basically what it means though, is surround yourself with people who are going to believe in your dreams with you, who are going to support you in developing those dreams, who are going to maybe even see you bigger than you see yourself. Um, you know, being a coach and having a lot of coach friends, it's pretty cool because we don't let each other get away with playing small. You know, if we're doing the, oh, I don't know, should I do that? I really love this, but I don't have time. I really love this, but... I don't know how I'd make a living at it, you know, whatever it might be, we're pretty good at calling each other out, you know, like, oh, isn't that curious that you really love that, but you're not going to do it. And um, I think that's really what helps us the most in, in, in actually any phase of our lives is to have people around us that see us bigger than we might see ourselves. And they don't allow us to play small. Right. 
Absolutely. I think this is a huge thing. And I actually, just so the audience knows our background, I actually hired you as my coach. This was, I mean, I, I want to say 10 years ago, but that sounds really like, <laughs> so, it sounds really 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I guess it was. Um, anyway, I was going through a divorce. I had no idea what direction I wanted to go with my business. I had two small children. It was just this incredibly overwhelming place. I was 43 years old. I felt like I'm in my 40s. I'm no good anymore. You know what I mean? I just had a lot of, I was in a crisis. <laughs> you grabbed me in a crisis. And it was really valuable because that bedding that we talked about then of, okay, what brings you joy? What nourishes you? I remember you asking me, what nourishes you? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I remember being, you know, like, why don't I know the answer to that? That's a completely reasonable, you know, question why can't I say what nourishes me and those those things really directed me to be where I am now and even become so useful now into constantly recreating and constantly moving forward and you know it's interesting because gosh I just love so much of what you're saying like like remembering that question of what nourishes you yeah. we've all heard the analogy you know if you're on an airplane put on your mask first you know if you haven't filled yourself up how are you going to help others but when we say that in a different way when we use a word like nourish like what nourishes you um, it almost feels luxurious right like we shouldn't get to ask that question I mean yeah. but on an airplane we're just talking about a minimum if you can't breathe how do you help somebody else right, right. and I oftentimes that's what we do is we get away with for a long time, kind of putting our needs second or sometimes third or sometimes last. And um, it's not about being selfish. You know, we have a bad word or a bad connotation around selfish, but it is about nourishing. You know, what does your life look like when you are full of passion and you're full of joy and you don't have to have it all figured out, right? You just have to to take that next step that does nourish you, whatever that might be. I remember you really loved the mountains, right? Yeah. And that was a place that you found a lot of nourishment. And um, you didn't live where you live now. Do you yeah. just want to say what state you live in? <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, no, the audience knows. I live in Colorado. And when we originally started working together, I was living in Singapore, which is, there's no mountains in Singapore. It's, um, they're all in Malaysia and, you know, kind of more on the continent, but on, in Singapore, there's, it's kind of flat and hot and there's snakes and, you know, it's like, <laughs> it wasn't really there, but I found a field. I remember I found a field that was close enough to my house and I would go walk in the field and sit in the field. I would check for bugs. But anyway, I was like, that really helped because I felt I needed earth. It's like, I needed that grounding. I was found that very nourishing. Yeah, and some people need water. I live by the ocean. Water is what, you know, nourishes me. Even five minutes a day, if I can just kind of see that giant, expansive ocean and feel, feel, I guess, it's like I feel small, but I feel powerful at the same time. You know, like, what is possible? So yeah. I, what I try to do when people give me the honor of walking through their life with them is figure out what it is that you in particular uh, need in order to be fearless and live that bigger life that you want to live. And it's often changing that focus that you talked about in the beginning. Yes. You know, we nourish so many ways, so many other people. So how do we change that focus a little bit so that we can be the best version of ourselves that we can be even in this, well, I don't even say even, that's a bad word to say, in this next awesome piece of our life and you know i think just kind of to close out i think one of the important points is that what nourished me in my you know part one and part two of my life does not necessarily nourish me now so i found that um you know going through menopause and like all the changes that um we all go through at this age this time in our life i suddenly realized what i love most of all what's most nourishing to me is i want to be by myself i want to read a book that just really challenges the way I think. I like to have my thoughts challenged, my belief system challenged. I really enjoy that. Um, I want to go outside. I want to go for, you know, whatever it is. Like I remember it's just really changed. I think it's important to not 
look at our bodies, our, our mind, our, our health, anything like we have in the last, you know, amount of time in our life. It's a totally new space. Yes. And I, I, I want to say two things. One yeah. is we were talking about not buying into the narrative, right? Yeah. And so the narrative as we uh, get older is, oh my gosh, I can't do the things that I did before right? And so all of a sudden, we start feeling less powerful, less fearless, less, um, you know, we have less confidence in ourselves because we, we tell ourselves and people tell us, we can't do the things we did before. You know what? We're not supposed to do the things we did before. We're supposed to do what's next. And that's the part that's so exciting. And I know we're coming to a close. I do have a question for you, though. Yes. And that is, you had to find your place to stand in so that you could be fearless with the next steps in your life. And I'm wondering if you could just say a little bit about, you know, what gave you the strength, the courage to, to, to take those next steps? I felt like, and I know my, many women feel this way, is I can't go back. Mm -hmm. I cannot do what I have been doing because it, really didn't work for me in so many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe it did work for, you know, you ladies in the audience. But for me, I thought I cannot go backwards. And I, I, I need to move forward, which means I've got, I, I, it's, I have to go this direction. Like there is no going back, you know? And I was making some pretty life-changing decisions at the time, which was radically changing my life and my children's life. So um, and I thought either I stay put or I, or I move forward. And really there is no other question, but to move forward. And sometimes that is super frightening and it was incredibly frightening. I remember that you were like holding my hand, <laughs> the altar, but wow, how worth it was that? Like, I feel like I started to find my voice, who I was. It was very life enhancing. It was incredible, but oh my God, terrifying. Well, and you, um, were talking about, you couldn't go back. Yeah. And that's an interesting thing because you know what? None of us can go back. Right, exactly. Yeah. In, in different ways. I mean, you made some choices to, to really kind of leap ahead, right? To leap ahead into a new dream, a new, what, a new way of being, a new life that you wanted to create, which, you know, we get afraid of change. You hear about change management and all that kind of stuff. But change really is just evolution right? It's an evolution of time. It's an evolution of space. We learn more, we do more. Um, and, and so you can't go backwards with evolution. <laughs> yeah. Even if it feels like you've gone backwards, you've learned something. Right. And that is the, the beauty of, that's the beauty, honestly, of getting older and having more life experience is that we have more to share. So yeah. ladies, what I want to say to you is go out, find out what nourishes you, and do it at least once a week. And after you do that uh, over time, see if you can actually begin to remember or to figure out what your next dream is, what your next focus is, what brings you energy. So figure out what nourishes you. That'll give you energy and then figure out what your next fearless step might be. That's a wonderful takeaway. Thank you so much, Tamara. So ladies, that is your challenge. What nourishes you? I'd love to have everybody write down below in the credits, um, in the area down there on YouTube. I still don't know what that's called. Anyway, would love to hear from all of you um, for what you what nourishes you. I think it's a great discussion. Um, to visit um, Tamara and learn more, go to Blue Opal, it's B-L-U, um, opal.com i'll put it in the lower thirds there um and she is offering up a 50 minute free consultation or discussion or chat time or whatever you want to call it to whomever is interested so thank you so much for joining me tamara thank you can't wait for our next talk me too <laughs>